Hey and welcome to this full guide slash tutorial on an arcane style environment. We will be making the following scene from the trailer. Everything will be made from scratch in the usual way we present our guides and courses. Giving an overview and breakdown first and then making it from scratch explaining the choices along the way. As you might have noticed this is part one and the other episodes will be rolling out soon after another. We will be using the following software, don't worry, multiple techniques will be shown in different software to make sure you learn as much as possible. This series is intended for people with a basic understanding of game art. Unlike most courses or guides, this isn't a regular follow along, even though you can, we try to structure it in a way that allows you to experiment, learn multiple techniques uh, that suit you and let you learn on your own terms and pace. But for this part we will be going over the following. So let's start with the reference and the tool we'll be using is PureRef. You can download it using the following link and follow the steps from there. Alright, so once you open PureRef, you can hit Ctrl K and that will create a new scene. And from there we import our reference image. And I made a little note here with uh, some things I want to go over. If you want to create a note, just hit Ctrl N and there you go. You have a note you can type in. So let's have a look what we have right here. So it's quite a simple scene with lots of stuff going on and a lot of opportunities to use different software and hone your skills due to the kinds of objects in the scene. So for example you have the ground material right here which we're going to make in Substance Designer. And we could make the tiles in there as well but if we look over here you can see there are some tiles sticking out of the floor, uh, same as over there. So I'll probably say it's a good thing to make those as actual objects. Now one of the main things you will see are all the swords and poles right here with the banners on them. So I would personally say it's a good thing to aim for around 4 variants of these large poles you can see right here and here and the banners are hanging on. And make around 3 variants for the swords you see right here. I would say this is one we're definitely going to make since it's quite in the foreground. Same for this one right here and this one and as you can see as in the shapes uh, to the ones in the back. They're quite similar to the one made over here and over here. So you can just reuse them uh, as we move further into the pack. It's the same for the poles too. We can make quite a generic one like you can see right here and just use those in the back right there. Or even better, the one that's just like straight as you can see right here without anything on the top, which will fill in the ones you can see right there, which are pretty much just sticks. So for the poles, I'm just going to make one variant right here and for the vertical stick you see going across here where the banner is hanging from, the same one here, we're going to just make them in separate objects so we can just move them in the scene so we don't have to make multiple objects or multiple poles. And for the spears, I'm aiming to make this one, this one and this one right here. Why those? Because this one is quite obvious in the scene. And I feel these are quite generic and modular, so we can probably get away with using them on different locations. Uh, switching them around a little bit and using the vertical poles we're going to use for the uh, banners right here to make some variations as well. So I just added some numbers to the ones we are going to make. Since it's quite a simple scene, I think it's quite uh, the planning stage can be quite easy. With bigger scenes, you can go into Photoshop and give colors and that kind of stuff. But with this and just some simple notes, uh, I don't think it's necessary in my personal opinion. But if you prefer to give it color or that kind of stuff, uh, please head into Photoshop and go wild. So I would say the real eye catchers of the scene are the person over there in the back. Luckily, it's um, quite easy to make. By the way, to use enter, use shift enter. Otherwise, if you use enter, it would just uh, go out of the node. You can type. So just shift enter. And it's going to add one person background. There we go. Um, that one should be quite simple to make. I would say uh, just mostly focus on the silhouettes and the bit of color right there. That doesn't have to be in detail at all. Like I'm not a character artist as well, at all. But since it's quite far in the back and blurry, it should be easy to make. Other than that, I think the two eye catches are the part of the spear or sword you can see right here and jinx her weapon so this one's going to be pretty interesting to make i'm going to look up some reference for that as well but to be fair it should be quite easy to make since most of what i'm seeing is just cylinders with some extrusion and i think the part that's going to be really interesting are going to be the jaws of the shark for the up close spear right here the, the handlebar uh, that one should be really really easy i've made a weapon like that before and 
it's quite an easy technique to get this done. One little advantage we have as well is that it's a little bit blurred out because it's right in the foreground. So we can get away with a bit less detail there. Then we have the banners, so we're gonna need a shader for that to make them wave and hang. So for the banners, let's make around six of them. So we have one unique banner for each of them. And we can just reuse one of those uh, for the banner right here. Then we have some boxes as well, as you can see right there and there. We're just gonna make this one right here and paste this one over there as well. Some basic rocks you can see right over there. And some little bombs right next to the shark and over there. And of course the person in the background. And one thing we shouldn't forget as well is the grass, but that should be quite easy too. So overall, quite a simple scene with some interesting objects we can learn a lot from. We have four variants of poles with one banner pole, which we're going to use a vertical pole for the hanging banners, as you can see right here. Then we have three spear variations, one, two and three. We're gonna make three types of swords, one, two and three. We're gonna make Jinx her weapon. We could make some grass and of course a shader as well. One close-up pole right here. Even though that's probably a spear, so let me edit that. We could make six banners, one box, some basic rocks, one bump, which we can just change the texture of, one person in the background. And one thing I forgot to add as well are the ground tiles, since we probably want to make those in a mesh, since we can see them sticking out right there as well. So we're just gonna need a cloth shader for the banners to move in the wind. Water foliage shader for the grass, and a basic metallic roughness and AO shader. Lighting should be quite easy as well, skylight, spotlight, that kind of stuff, we will get to that once the time comes. So for the software we're going to use Pure Ref for the reference, Maya and ZBrush for 3D modeling, Substance Designer, Painter and 3D Code for texturing, Unreal Engine to create the scene, and Photoshop just more as a backup or to make small edits in. You can swap any of these out for your own personal software, like let's say Maya for Blender. This is also going over the choice that are being made and that kind of stuff, and those can apply to other 3D software as well. We will be returning here every once in a while as well, so before we head into it, let's clean up this scene right here. So if you want to rotate an image, hold Ctrl and drag, there you go. And use Ctrl Alt to enlarge an image or make it smaller. So if you select them all with the notes added to it as well, we can make it a bit bigger and there we go. And to optimize our scene, let's hit Ctrl O and there you go, Ctrl S to save it. And we are set. All right, so I made a blank Unreal Engine scene and the first thing you wanna do with every environment is make a block out. So what I personally like to do is since I like having all the things uh, in my scene already, like the skybox and the directional light, is just head into the starter content and go to maps and just copy the level. So that's the content. Let's create a folder called Arcane Environment. There we go. Double click and let's paste it in there. And we hit F2. I'm just going to rename this to whatever you like. There we go. And we're going to open this one up. And from there, we're going to head to the world outliner or just select everything in here and just delete what you want to delete. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete the reflection captures. I'm going to delete the audio. Same for the folders as well. Is there anything else I want to delete? Now that should be it. I'm going to delete the uh, volume as well. The post process. There we go. All right. So we have a nice empty blank scene we can get started with. All right, so to get started, let's get a landscape in. So we're gonna head to modes and click on landscape. Hey, post edit Bram here. So for the landscape, I later decided to change it to a smaller landscape, a seven by seven. So instead of going for the normal one, the, the, the default options, I set it to uh, the smaller size, the seven by seven and hit create. So for scale, I'm gonna use the Unreal Engine 4 character or the mana queen. There we go. And if you want to get this as well, you can use um, you can use a cube as well um, to your desired height. But uh, I prefer using the Mana Queen. And what you can do is head over to the marketplace and go to Epic Games content and just sort sort on orders first. And I just imported the Unreal Engine 4 Mana Queen mobile, and that should provide you with this mesh right here. What you can do from there is just 
click here and right click head to asset actions and export and from there you can export the mesh so you have a reference piece in your Maya scene as well all right so it's time to get a camera in let's head to place actors and type in camera there we go if it's not visible just hit g on your keyboard and it should pop up you can hide all these icons by hitting g there you go and from there we can just position the camera i'm just going to position it around here and looking at our reference i think this should be a good camera position but we will adjust that throughout the block out so for the block out what i recommend is just grab the reference image and start blocking out yourself i'm going to do the same thing and once that's done we're going to go over it going to go over the choices that i've made why i've made certain choices and from there we can compare to and see what we got Alright, so here we have to block out thus far. So personally, as you may have noticed, I go a bit more into detail when it comes to the block out. So some people prefer just to use boxes within Unreal, which is fine too. Whatever works best for you and gives you an understanding of what you're making and to efficient the end product. But personally, I really like this just from a personal preference, but also I like to see the base of the final shapes so I can understand and imagine better how the final image will look. For the grass, I used the grass from a generator I made in Substance Designer. Not necessarily something you have to do, but again, it gives me a better understanding of the end product. Make comparing reference to the scene easier. I add a second viewport to the scene by going to Windows, then heading to Viewports and clicking on the second viewport and just docking it over here in one of these menus. One important to, thing to keep in mind when making blockouts, in my opinion, is that it will not be the same as the reference image or the concept image you're working from. And that's alright. Especially when working in games, as an environment artist, you're the bridge between concept and reality. Or in this case, translating a concept into a stylized 3D artwork. But we will try to nail it as close as possible. Alright, so so far we have our level, our assets, which include our character mesh, the one from Unreal Engine, and the blockout folder, which is a bit messy, but it's purely blockout, so I don't really care about it too much, to be fair. Um, what I want to do now, or what we're going to do, we can head back to our arcane environment folder, and we're going to make another folder for our materials. So one thing we're gonna do right now is make a master material for most of the assets. So we can just instance it from there. So let's head over to materials and textures and click on material. Let's call it basic MRO, material roughness AO. There we go. And double click it to open. All right, so make this bigger. There we go. And as you can see here, we have our material. So what we're going to do next is we're going to use a make material attribute. So what you want to do is select your basic emerald material right here and head over to use material attribute and right here, check the box and then you get the following. From there, all you want to do is hit right click and just type in make materials attribute and there you go. So basically what this does is gives us a bit more freedom and especially with complex materials. But this material is going to be quite simple and we're also going to be looking at material functions for this one. So it's going to be quite interesting. Alright, so let's get started with our UV. So what we're going to do is type in coordinates. There we go. And then we're going to add a scalar parameter. And we're just going to call this UV scale. From there we're going to add a multiply. 
and we just hook these ones up there we go so if we set the default value to one it will be just tiling once aka a normal texture or uv map but with this we can actually control how much we want something to tile let's say we have a tiling texture if we want to tile it five times we can actually do that so as you can see once we're done we have these groups right here and we have tiling uv scale we can check it and from there we can scale our uv map so to do that we are going to select none and type in tiling there we go now we have a group for tiling all right so I'll select select them all and let's put a little comment around them and we're going to use the you and we're going to call this tile uv so from there we have three things to take care of we have our diffuse map our mro map and our normal map and we will be packing together the metallic roughness and ao map aka the mro map so let's get started with that one all right so right click and let's start in texture sample parameter 2d there we go and we're going to call this mro map drag it over here and what we're going to do now is just make this smaller and we're going to head over here and we're going to make a new folder called textures double click it and from there i'm going to import these ones right here so this is nothing special the diffuse literally just uh one by one k white square same for the normal map only it's a color of a normal map and same for the base mro i made in the photoshop and it, each channel just has a certain value and that's it and it's just packed together so that's a value in the r the g and the b channel and the difference between mro and mro h is that there's also value in the alpha channel so you have value in the red the green the blue and the alpha channel so for example the m or the red channel will be for the metallic the green channel is for roughness the blue channel is for the ao map and the alpha channel can contain a mask if you want to for example use opacity uh, somewhere this however can also be packed in the diffuse map so let's select them all and hit ctrl s to save them let's enlarge in this there we go and click on your emerald map and let's set the default texture to base mro and for the sampler type we're going to use masks we're not going to be using any color here like i said the red green and blue channel will be containing uh, black and white masks all right from there on we're just gonna get three scalar parameters in here so let's just copy them three times there we go let's align them and we're just gonna call this adjust and just gonna copy that to paste it metallic the next one will be adjust roughness and last but not least adjust ao so since the metallic roughness and ao map are already gonna have value to them we're gonna leave the default value to zero since we don't want to increase it or decrease it we want to keep it as a default by default and these are purely to increase the value so quite simple from there we're just going to add an add since we don't want to multiply you want to add the value to well the current value that's stored in here hook this one up to a and let's hook this the channel up to a and the adjuster to b just gonna copy this two times there we go same story hook green up to a and the adjuster to b and let's do the same for the blue channel and from there all we have to do is red is metallic so let's hook this one up to the metallic input there we go the green one is roughness so let's hook that one up to roughness and the last one is ao ambient occlusion so let's hook that one up to ambient occlusion and there we go I just put a frame on it mro and we are done all right so let's hook our multiply up to our uvs there we go and let's now head over to our diffuse so what we're we going to do again scan all the texture sampler in 2d there we go we're just going to call this one diffuse map move it over here gonna get a scalar in again and we're going to call this one diffuse brightness let's get a multiply in and same as the ones down below just hook it up but instead of the mask we're going to use the rgb channel as a whole and hook it into a another thing we want to do is we want to set to uh, the base diffuse and we want to use color so the base brightness of our text should be one so we're going to set it to one so we're going to head over to materials and go to materials and textures and we're going to make a material function and what we're going to call this is mf for material function lowercase set 
saturation. So let's open that one up. So let's start with a scalar parameter and we're going to call this saturation. Then we're going to use a one minus, hook them up. And we're going to use a clamp. Then we're going to get a, a desaturation node in because we're making a material function for desaturation. Use this as a fraction. And now we're going to get a constant three factor in. There we go. And set the material expression to white, maybe a small tint to it. There we go. And we're going to use this is pretty much going to be our input right here. So let's, let's put this in desaturation. So we're going to be adding a switch parameter, a static switch parameter. There we go. And we're going to call this desaturation since we either want to saturate or desaturate. So we're going to hook this one in to true for desaturation and this one to false if you want to saturate and hook it up to the output, apply, save. And there we go. Oh, we have to do from here. Whoops. Oh, we have to do here. Let's just drag this in oh, to the material function. Let's just drag this in right over here. And there you go. You have your material function saturation. So let's hook these up. There we go. All right, let's get a factor parameter in. There we go. And we're going to call this diffuse tint. Just set it to white. And from there, we're going to add a multiply. Move this one up to B, this one to A. And then to our base color. Let's put a frame around it or comments where this is called. And there we go. Let's connect this one to our Tau EUV. And now we have some control about our diffuse map. We can either bump up the brightness or lower it or add some saturation to it. An important bit as well, when you hook this up, you can get some error messages right here. Make sure with your texture maps that the compression settings are set to the correct one. So since these are mask, you want to set them to mask no RGB. Save. So now that our base MRO has been set to mask and sRGB disabled, all the errors should be fine and should be working. Just make sure you have that checked. And for, of course, your diffuse and normal, you just want to use the food. And for your normal map, you want to use a normal map. And finally, the normal map. So again, what we want to do is get a texture parameter 2D in there and just call it a uh, normal map. There we go. Now in the menu here, let's select our base normal map and make sure the sample type is set to normal. It should um, automatically adjust if you have set it to normal map in the compression settings within the texture. Now to give some control about the normal map, we're going to use a flatten normal node. There we go. And a scalar parameter, which we're just going to call normal intensity. That's the default value to one. Hook this up to the flatness and the RGB to normal. And then we just hook this one to normal. Then we're just gonna add a comment to it called normal map. There we go. And hook this one to our UV. And there you go. You have a very simple master material for your diffuse map, your material roughness and occlusion map, and your norm map with some parameters to have some more control over it. Now we're just gonna hit apply and save. I'm just going to rename this to MM4 Master Material, Basic MRO. There we go. Make sure all your files are safe. Let's head over to File and click on Save All or Control Shift S. And there we go. We got our first Master Material. From there, if you want to use it on an object, we can just right click, Create Material Instance, give it a name. There we go. Double click. And as you can see here, you have your diffuse maps your desaturation and all your adjusters. One thing we want to do now what I'm seeing, I will do this off screen, is we actually want to give these menus a name. For example, with the tiling, we have our menu called tiling, but with the other ones, the names aren't, well, that great. So I will get that sorted off screen. It's the same thing with the tiling. All we do is just head over here and Let's see, when we went over to material expressions with the group, we're just going to call these adjust, adjusters. There we go. And all we have to do from there is just select the group adjusters. And now when we hit apply, save, these should all come under the group adjusters. 
a small note I want to add before you maybe get confused. If you want to add the saturation to the adjusters as well, you might want to click on here and be like, wait, but there's no category or any way to add it to the group. Let's open up our material function saturation. Let's head over to our switch. And from there we can just give it a name adjusters. There we go. And now when we apply and save and do the same thing for our master material. There you go, it's now under the tab adjusters. All right, so another material I want to get sorted is the material for the banner, so the wave in the wind. So again, we're gonna head over to materials and textures and make a new material. And we're gonna call this master material cloth. There we go. Let's open it up. And here we are again, same story. Let's use material attributes, there we go. And let's type in make material attributes. There we go. And let's hook these up. So with almost any material, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get in some texture coordinates and a scalar parameter. And we're going to call that one UV tiling. Let's get a multiply in there and let's set the default value to one. All right, so now for the diffuse, it's pretty much going to be the same as the um, the one from the basic MRO. So what we're going to do is just head over here. We're going to select all of this right here. Ctrl C, copy it, head over here and Ctrl V, paste it. There we go. Now there are going to be a couple of changes. For example, diffuse map. We're actually going to call it diffuse map DA. Because for the banners, we're going to save the alpha channel, the alpha map and the alpha channel. So we'll be using the RGB channel for the diffuse map and the alpha channel for the opacity mask. So let's hook the alpha map up to our opacity mask and this one to our base color. A little side note on the material function saturation. Another way you can do it is by, if we go over here, it's just using the desaturation node. But actually what this does, and I forgot to explain it in the basic MRO, is it very much caps it at zero or one. So you can get some weird results in my opinion with just this node if you go too high up too low down. Uh, but this pretty much caps the saturation if that makes sense. Now again the same for the MRO, we're just gonna grab this, Ctrl C and Ctrl V, copy it. Let's just make sure we get the comment with it as well, there we go. We'll get everything up, so as you know red is metallic, green is roughness and blue is AO. Let's hook them up to the UV tiling as well. And last but not least, before we get with the wind function, we're just gonna call, copy the normal map, head over here again, and just copy it from there, hook everything up, and there we go. So now we've got these three set up, and we're actually gonna make a material function for the wind. We can make it near as well, but a material function, in my opinion, keeps it a bit more organized, and that way we can learn a bit more as well. So let's head over here to materials and textures and make a material function. Then we're just gonna call this material function wind. Let's open it up. And we're just gonna get a simple grass or wind in here. With some scalar parameters. So one we're gonna call wind intensity. We're gonna copy it two times. We're gonna call it wind wave and wind speed. And now for the last one, we're just gonna use a constant, a constant factor of four. There we go, just leave it like that, change nothing. And just hook everything up from there. So let's set the wind intensity to one, wind weight to 0.5, and the same goes for the wind speed. We don't want it too high, 0.5. We can change it later anyway, but this is what I'm guessing should be the right numbers, the right values. For me, we're gonna add a vertex color. There we go. And we're gonna multiply it. Hook this one up to B and this one to A. And if you want, you can add a static uh, switch parameter to it. If you want to switch the wind on or off, but I mean, we're gonna use it as a wind shader. So why would we want to turn it off? So just hook it up like that. There we go. And you get this little effect right here. And I, for some reason, I just love this about Unreal. Like the scrolling texture like this. Uh, anyway, let's head back to um, to our basic cloth material. There we go. Oh, before we do that, we're going to save and hit apply. Or it does it by itself, of course. 
head over to mater master material cloth and drag in the material function wind there we go all right just something interesting i found for myself apparently you need to select two different nodes to create a comment a group but i can't do it with one uh, so what i'm just gonna do is just copy this select it create a comment delete it there you go Uh, she's gonna call this wind and we're gonna hook this one up to world position offset so as you can see in the preview right now we got a nice little simple cloth or wind material for our banners we're just gonna hit save and it should apply everything as well and as with the other materials what i'm just gonna do off screen is just uh, set the right groups for everything so everything is nicely organized all right so what we can do now is just head over here and create a material instance and we're just gonna call it something random there we go and we can just drag it in here and now our banner should move also because with the block out i attach these poles to the object they move now as well but you get the idea and what we can do from here is just open this up there we go and make it a bit smaller because we don't really care about that we care about this menu right here and what we can just do from there i still have to make some changes to the groups we can um set the wind speed weight and intensity so we can set it a lot faster as you can see um, but let's set the intensity to around 0.5 especially the speed doesn't need to be that high let's see if we crank it up a little bit there we go it's quite fast let's set it to 0.2 and wind weight as you can see when we crank it up a lot the following happens let's set it to 10 yeah, we don't really want that, so that's set to point two as well. And there we go, we got some simple but smooth banner movement. A bit of wind. I quite like it, it doesn't have to move that much. And I think especially once the banners are done, as we can see in our reference. There we go. I think especially once these are done, they will look quite cool when moving around. All right, so we set up our block out scene and assets and our base master materials. In the next part, we will be starting on the ground material, basic light, skybox, and some other assets. See you there.